we've had a really exciting delivery this morning. The first of the major upgrades on Geronimo, we've treated ourselves to some air conditioning. I decided to do the installation myself for a number of reasons. First of all, I can do as good a job as anybody else. Secondly, it's a pretty economical way of doing it. Thirdly, if it ever goes wrong, I know where I put everything, so I can fix it myself. As well as needing 230 volts AC, which I'm going to take from the CB in the consumer unit, I'm also going to need 12 volts DC. Removing the extractor fan above the kitchen provides me with a hole to fit the air conditioning unit in, and it also provides me with 12 volt DC power. It's vitally important to avoid leaks that any parts that are fitted to the roof of your camper are sealed thoroughly against the weather. This means when you come to remove them, it's going to be a pretty mechanical process. Truma very thoughtfully provide a well thought out adapter piece. This fits a standard 400mm aperture in the roof. After thoroughly cleaning the mating surfaces on both the roof and the adapter unit, check which side faces forward and which face needs to go uppermost. Then apply a generous bead of a non-setting silicon based mastic. I've decided to run the cabling along the surface of the ceiling and through the cupboards. I'll cover it up later using a surface mounted conduit. The cable that I'm using is a standard 1.5mm domestic twin and earth. This is rated normally at between 14 and 20 amps and I'm going to be connecting it to a 10 amp RCCB so it should be just fine. Fitting the air conditioning unit in the hole left by the extractor fan seemed like the obvious thing to do. Unfortunately it has left another job though. I now need to move the solar panels. This system was due an upgrade anyway so it's just brought that job forward a little. If you're getting anything out of these little videos, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe, like it, and hit the notification bell. Thank you. The unit arrived fitted with a seal. If you're going to use the fitting adapter, this needs to be removed first. Once the external portion of the air conditioning unit is fitted snugly over the fitting adapter, it's held permanently in place using the brackets and bolts provided. Now's a good time to take a look at some of the electrical connections. There's not too much to do. The 230 volts needs connecting up, the 12 volts needs connecting up, and if you've bought the optional lighting lead, you can plug that in as well. This air conditioning unit comprises of two distinct parts. There's the exterior bits that will go on the roof of the van and the internal pieces which go inside the van. The void between the two parts is filled using packing pieces. A couple of these are supplied with the unit. Extras can be bought if you need them. The number of packing pieces that you use is dictated by the thickness of the roof of the van. When you come to fit the internal panel, it is attached to the steel brackets that you fitted earlier to hold the external pieces in place. It simply screws on.
trim panels and filters just click into place. All of the visible wiring is being tidied away in surface mounted conduits. Now's a good time to put the kettle on, because it's my advert. How does it feel to crash a classic airliner? If you already know the answer to this question, you should write a book. If you'd like to know the answer to this question, you should read my book, The Icarus Game, by me, Steve Woodhouse. It's available right now on Amazon in hardback, paperback and ebook formats. Experience the adventure of my lifetime. Go on, you know you want to. Once you've finished installing the air conditioning unit, you just need to pair up the remote control. The instructions for this are fairly straightforward. For future reference, I've labelled the circuit breaker and the fuse. As you can see, this unit looks very neat and tidy, both on the outside of the van and inside. Well there it is. That's how we went about installing the air conditioning in our camper van. It's not rocket science, but there's enough work there to keep you busy for a few hours. I think overall it took me two days, probably around 10 hours work. Was it worth the effort? For us, we think yes it was. For you, you'd need to work it out. On the negative side, it's certainly the most costly upgrade that we've done. It does take a lot of work to do the installation. When it's running, it can also be a bit noisy. On the positive side, it makes life so much more comfortable. When it's hot outside, it's cool in the van. When it's cold outside, it's warm in the van. We love it. So in short, yes, if you feel it's what you want, I would certainly recommend it.